Hey all farmer Dre back at it. We're gonna go ahead and start off the morning by picking more farm fresh tomatoes. So just like that, got done picking tomatoes here. It's about 150 pounds. There's a lot of Carolina golds, not too many of the Carolina golds shared that one row there. And then of course you got your red deuce. Beautiful, beautiful, nice number ones. So it's not too bad, not too bad. I also gotta come through and stake these one more time. And the reason is their fruit is starting to set up here on top and it's gonna, the rows are starting to fall over here. But it's been a pretty busy time this time of year trying to, you know, get done with the strawberries there with tomatoes and just start plant and finish planting everything, staying up with the spray program in the orchard. I'm gonna go ahead and head in the warehouse and start grading these and then get ready to go uh, to the farmer's market this afternoon. So Isaac has been in the warehouse. He's been busy packing strawberries for the market. And uh, he's got two, four, six boxes and then a special order there of the pints. What are these right here? Seconds. They're seconds, so softer ones. So we are actually getting really close to end the strawberry season. This week, I believe it's gonna be our last week of strawberries. The plants are just looking kind of rough and the uh, grass and weeds got out of control. Isaac could tell you because he knows he's been out there picking and we actually bring in some uh, reinforcements to help us pick because I told my parents you know if they want to pay for my back surgery at 30 then I'll continue picking. Isaac is a true taste tester right here. Mm. Pretty good huh? Homegrown tomatoes. Homegrown tomatoes. What would I do with a homegrown tomatoes? Alrighty so Isaac we got a rag and this is how we grade them. We just get a rag there, wipe them down nicely, and then we just put them in the boxes in the second to number ones there. But yeah, just a, each individual fruit at a time and you keep going until the job gets done. Just like that, tomatoes are good here. He's trying to ruin my shot here, you know? Uh, look at that beautiful and then strawberries. Can't beat it, just look at these Carolina Golds. Mmm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. And then these red deuce tomatoes. Mmm. So good. Alrighty, so I just got back from the farmer's market and uh, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about our tomato plants. And, uh, you know, we like to see our tomatoes, you know, just uh, thrive and go perfectly. But this year, for the first time, I am seeing a disease issue. And, you know, if you don't take care of the disease, you know, it could pretty much go through and wipe out your whole crop. So, you know, we came through this morning and picked. And one thing I didn't show you guys is, you know, some of the tomato plants in here. The disease we're fighting against right now is called botrytis. Botrytis is gray mold. You know, it's a technical term for gray mold. And what it does, it, it, it just rots the fruit from the top down. So, you know, we fight this disease out on our strawberry patch and we go through weekly and spray for that. You know, and a lot of times in the high tunnel, you know, we really don't have to worry about the weather and the conditions. But this year, since it, it has been so cloudy and humid, you know, and this is our third year growing tomatoes in the exact same place. You know, some disease resistance building up. And now if we don't do something about it, it could come through and kill off our whole entire crop. So I kind of want to come here and show you guys what the uh, botrytis looks like. So this whole stem right here died of the botrytis. So all it does is it comes through right here and kills off like your flower buds mainly. And then on the fruit itself, oh here we go. This is what it does to the fruit here. It just kind of, you know, it, it, it mold the gray mold there kind of the spores on and then it kind of kills the plant from the inside out and then it comes out to the outside so you know I've been I saw a little bit of this when I was picking and some last week and last week when I saw this problem I looked in our book in our spray guide and then I sprayed some switch for the botrytis and I actually called our local expert out and he came here he works for the uh, Missouri Extension and he said, one, you know, switch was a good move to do. You know, it's a systemic fungicide and it, you know, goes through the plant and kind of helps out everything from top to bottom. 
But one, you know, cultural thing to do whenever you have this problem with the botrytis is to, you know, manage the airflow as much as you can. So whenever you grow these type of bush type tomatoes, you know, these, um, you know, determinants, you know, there's not much airflow coming through here, you know, between the plants at ground level. So, you know, one way to do that is to go through and trim off the bottom leaves, especially on this variety in particular, to kind of increase the, the airflow, or you can set up half fans. And the half fans are the fans that kind of hang up from your, your purling pipes there, and it kind of circulates the air. And the reason it's been so bad in here this year, you know, we've had a really wet spring, and, you know, it's been really humid, like I mentioned earlier. So there wasn't much, you know, a lot of the times during the day, you know, the, the, the sides, the side curtains here were closed all the way up, you know, because, you know, the sun wasn't shining and it was just, you know, there wasn't any sense to drop down the sides if it was raining. So whenever the sides were up, you know, there was not much airflow. So the air kind of stood still in here. So, you know, that just increases, you know, the, the increases, the, 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 but the botrytis spores. And now we're seeing an effect here on the plants, you know, I'm not sure if it's going to affect the yield or not. I'm still hoping to hit that 30 plant, 30 pounds per plant goal, which, you know, the plants, you know, they're still coming through here flowering and still setting on fruit. I'm still hitting them up with that with the high potassium fertilizer. But, you know, a lot of times, especially on the YouTubes, you just kind of want to show the best parts of your farm. And I like being very transparent with you guys, showing you exactly what's going on. So we are having the gray mold issue. You know, well, the easiest way to do it is to spray that, that fungicide. And, you know, I'm going to go ahead and try to install, you know, turn on that fan and try to install another fan here, keep the air moving. But now, since it got warm outside, we're going to go ahead and leave the curtains open most of the day. And, you know, whenever it's nice, we're going to leave it open all day long so that the air, so hopefully, you know, the new fruits coming, coming and setting on will not have that problem anymore. So, you know, there's always a problem, but if you don't have a solution, you're in big trouble. But overall, these tomatoes are putting on some serious uh, tomatoes. You know, look at there, there's a lot of green berries, even on these, the Carolina Golds here. You know, there's quite a bit setting on here. So, good news, good news. We're going to have a decent crop. So, this just proves, you know, you got to be out in your high tunnels, you know, coming through and picking them yourself. You know, it's easier just to hire someone sometimes to come do all your work for you. But if you're actually not physically working, then you do not know if there's a problem. You know, an employee, you know, whenever they come through, they just pick, they don't care what they see. But the person who cares is you, the grower. And um, a lot of times, you know, the only person that will care is the person growing them. So that's why I like to come through here. You know, first of all, we come through every day pretty much now and uh, irrigate and try to keep the water enough moisture in the soil to do that. But, you know, whenever we come through and just kind of, you know, drop the sides or irrigate, we only see the front plants, you know, the first 10 feet of the high tunnel. And a lot of times we don't get down, you know, towards the center until we come through and pick. And, you know, I saw this problem, you know, last week a little bit. And, you know, I came through today and I was like, you know what, I'm just going to show you. You know, I never know, you know, if I have this, this problem in our high tunnel, one of you guys, the viewers, you guys might have the same problem and you guys might not know what it is. So that's why I like to be, trans be very transparent and show you guys. So if you guys have the same issue, so you guys can treat it. But anyways, you know, this is just a quick little tomato video. You know, we picked quite a bit this morning and now it's time to, you know, keep it strong, keep the tomato plants healthy, you know, keep them sprayed, make sure everything is growing nicely so you're, you could have a, a good harvest. And like I mentioned in my, in the, my previous videos, this is the most precious piece of soil we have in our property. And why not try to produce the mo most the most you can out of you know the work and input you're putting so that's why it's very important to come through and inspect them to see you know how the plants are doing you know get down below get on your knees you know check the, the actual the actual stems of the plant and you know if you have some issues so you can go ahead and treat it before it's a problem and i was talking to a farmer and he said that you know if you go out out in your orchard or in your high tunnel and you see a problem a disease issue you're already a day too late so that's why it's very important to come through and inspect your plants so that whenever you see the first slight problem, you go ahead and do something about it so that then your plants and then your hard, hard work actually pays off. Let's say hypothetically, you know, I saw the problem and didn't do anything about it. And then, you know, come two to three weeks from now, my tomato plants start dying. You know, then all my work from end of, end of February 
went to waste and I, you know all the investment of the seed time and you know one thing we can't turn back around is time so you know we can replant this with tomatoes again but they won't ripen up till later so that's why it's very critical to come through and inspect your plants alrighty so I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys our second high tunnel here the tomato plants you know the ones that are okay they're doing fine but as you guys can see here there's a few empty spots here where I had to replant and the reason is whenever we came through and uh put the baseboards last fall we left about an inch gap you know to kind of leave them above ground but the only downfall of that was the air kind of went under underneath and where you see some of these smaller plants here i had to replant those because the plastic lifted up and it killed off those tomatoes so you know along the backs there and towards the edges you know they're doing fine but some of the middle plants are you know i had to replant them so it's uh it is what it is you live and learn but i'm hoping we, we won't have this problem in here since this is fresh soil new plants and new dirt you know to kind of that we're planting in for the first time so we shouldn't see a problem there the reason we're seeing the problem in there you know is you know the, this is a third year we're growing tomatoes in this one so you know disease disease builds up and but we are seeing some pretty promising fruit coming on here in there as well and these are the same varieties as well the three rows of of red deuce one row of carolina golds and the other three rows there are the same variety of the red deuce there so overall the tomato plants are looking very good all right y'all this is going to be pretty much it for today if you guys haven't already go ahead and hit that subscribe button go ahead and smash that like button if you guys enjoyed today's video it really helps out the channel don't forget to hit that notification icon so you guys can be notified whenever i do upload a video i want to say thanks for watching up to this point you guys have a good day we will see you next time